Doctor. Well, just on the current account deficit. Could um, you shout out her? Yes, yeah, on the current account deficit. Are you are you saying if uh, it got to much, if the deficit got to much lower levels, are you saying that um, even if things got really bad, that the OCR would never get to zero or near zero in New Zealand because of this this small country risk that we have? Well, as we've said, we think that the uh, the effectiveness of the OCR, which we think has been very effective up till now will start to decline as you start going into cuts that are really low, especially if it starts pushing you near a negative real interest rate. We have got a 90-day track that's consistent with the OCR troughing at around 2.5%. That doesn't cause us any particular concerns. Um, were the economy to have more bad news, it's not inconceivable that it could go lower, like 2%. But to go much below that, we think, would be unlikely, unusual, and would have some undesirable effects. Dr Bollard, I'm just wondering whether you've noticed a change in attitude of the banks since the job summit. Yeah, we've had a couple of conversations with the banks since then, and they, I think, in principle... Well, we're somewhat surprised by some of the discussion at the job summit, surprised that there was this build-up of angst in the corporate community about banks um, have, have responded that what they were doing was putting in place um, tougher lending conditions that had actually already been signalled or were even there in legal documentation but had never been actually insisted on before and have said, well, some New Zealand chief financial officers have got to get real about all of this. But despite all of that, they have also heard and I think reasserted the fact that they want to be here for New Zealand's recovery and they want to be part of it and that that does involve going out and getting extra funding as well as being open for sensible new business. Uh, I, uh, Dr Bollard, uh, are you um, concerned that the banks have yet to issue uh, government guaranteed wholesale debt internationally? Uh, we know they've watched how the Australian government guaranteed debt has gone with Australian parent banks and there's a number of them either out there or very close to being out there to test it for New Zealand now. So we'll wait and watch the outcome of that. And in the um, report you talk about um, bank margins increasing. Are you concerned that um, the banks are doing everything they can to play their part? Oh, we certainly don't want to see bank margins building up unnecessarily. We can see some reason why they would at the longer end, um, but uh, we do expect banks to be competitive through this period um, while, while being conservative and sensible. Uh, as we've said before, it hasn't been so much bank margins that have concerned us. It's more been any build-up um, in conditions, terms and conditions of lending that have tried to transfer effectively all the risk of lending onto the corporate in a way that's very difficult for the corporate to accept that. Uh, so we're more worried about those conditions and covenants than, than cuts and rates. Do you think we need this co-investment fund that was talked about at the Job Summit? Oh, I haven't got any comment on that. came up at the Job Summit was a discussion about aggregation of lending to local authorities. One of, the, um, one of the reserve bank's powers is to lend to local authorities at attractive interest rates. Has there been any consideration of, of taking up that power and, and, and aggregating local authority funds and providing them to local authorities at low interest rates? No. Is there a reason why not? Uh, we haven't felt it relevant at the minute, but we're very aware of our powers and we'll keep looking at them. Is it a useful power, given you've, you've, you've expressed concerns at the last few monetary policy statements about rising rates? Clearly, if local authorities could get funding at, at more attractive rates, closer to the OCR, then, then that would have quite a significant effect on... Well, our comment about rising rates was effectively they were putting the price of services to their ratepayers up. How you're finding other ways of funding that isn't actually going to cure it. It could make it worse. We have lots of very indebted local authorities in New Zealand who, with accumulated debt of, of a very large amount of money, if the Reserve Bank was providing that funding, then the banks would presumably have funding available for lending to other people? Um, in principle, local authorities can go out to markets themselves, and they do. Dr Bonnard, your projections of unemployment going to 6.8% seem um, relatively low, given the kind of position that we're in 
what makes you confident that it is not going to be much worse? Um, probably a couple of things going on there. One is the idea that people uh, over the past few years seem to have been working fewer hours on average. So to get the same number of hours of work, uh, firms need to employ a large number of people. So at the margin, that's going to keep more people in jobs than would have otherwise been the case. The other thing is, during a downturn, uh, when unemployment starts to pick up, you have more people returning to university or other other study forms of study, and so they they although they're not working, they don't actually appear in the unemployment statistics, and so that participation rate, which has been trending up very strongly over the past few years in the strong economy, is expected to to come down. Um. At the job summit, sorry to raise the park back to keep on harping back to the job summit, but you're going to have to shout out, Nigel. The uh, the banks uh, said that they were that lending was increasing uh, to to businesses over the last three months of last year. Now, am I right in saying that the Reserve Bank figures on that uh, show lending that is being drawn down currently, and hence therefore lending that's been agreed months previously? Do you have any sense? of what new lending to business is doing at the moment? Is it being maintained at similar levels? Um, yeah, yes, you're right in what you said. The, strong, the lending figures for the corporate sector are quite strong. That does reflect commitments that have been drawn, that have been reached previously, that have been drawn down, some backfilling for finance company invest, um, funding and so on. Uh, on new lending, yes, we do have some data. It, it looks like it um, it's indicates reduced volumes, as you might expect at the minute. Part of that, of course, is driven by reduced demand for credit at the moment. Can you say by, by how much it's reduced? Oh, I haven't got the numbers on me, sorry. Dr Bollard, um, the uh, Real Estate Institute seem to see some signs of uh, at least stability in the market with increasing volumes in the last month's figures. What are your projections in terms of house prices and how do you see that housing market unfolding in the in the next 12 months? Yeah, good to be optimistic. Well, we, we still um, think that there's quite a bit of house price reduction to go on uh, and that residential investment will remain weak for some time as well. So we've got residential investment still weakening through to the, halfway through this year and then house prices continuing their fall through to the end of this year. Uh, a peak to trough fall of around 20%, which is roughly 25% in real terms. Uh, we then have fragile pickup. Is that late next year? So we say not yet. Any other questions? Good. Well, thank you for coming, everybody.